my brother picked this up last fall for $275, $300, somewhere in that range. It's been sitting down here under a tarp ever since. It's time to finally drag it out and um, get it running, get it going for gardening season. Just fill the tank up with gas. I'm checking for spark. If it has it, it will jump between those two points there. All right, we've got no spark. And last fall, we had an issue down here on... What is this, the regulator, rectifier, whatever it is. This is so corroded up for when it burned, I had to clean these contacts up a bit. So I'll do that again and see if it'll fire up. Well, I just couldn't get it fired up, so we ended up pulling it up here with the truck. Last fall, I cleaned up the connections, like I told you, down here, and that took care of it. But you can see the wires are pretty darn crappy, so I'm gonna replace those. We're gonna pull the grill off here, get the mouse nest cleaned out that's down inside. If you noticed before, this thing had a blanket wrapped around it and some bailing wire or something. I've got an old seat off my skid steer right up there that I'm going to put on it. Just some minor stuff and uh, just kind of rehab this thing, get it ready to go. If you don't know the backstory on this, uh, go ahead and watch my previous video about it. It's been through a fire and it's still going. I took a wire brush to the terminals over here on the uh, rectifier, put some new spade connectors on the wires coming from the uh, stator and from the battery. So we'll get those plugged back on and see if we have spark again. I've also got the old seat ripped off. Just an old rusty seat pan with some gross foam stuck to it. And I placed this uh, old seat that I saved out of the skid steer. It's ripped up too, but it's a far better seat than that thing over there was. All right, still no spark. So I'm not sure why um, messing with the wires on the rectifier did anything last fall because you can have a bad rectifier and it will still run, it's just not going to charge the battery. That might have been coincidence. Maybe pulling on those wires moved other wires inside. But I'm going to go ahead and test the coil now. To see if your coil is any good, you need to take an ohm meter. And, I mean, something cheap like this works fine. These little cheapo freebies from Harbor Freight. And we're going to stick it across the two terminals. You need to disconnect the wires from it to get an accurate reading. You can see they're 5.1, 5 ohms. So, our uh, coil is good. If it was uh, an infinite symbol or just, you know, a ridiculous amount of ohms, like in the thousands, then it would be bad. The wiring inside is bad. That's how you check um, the primary windings. Now, we're also going to check power to the coil and the points. So, mine's labeled. I don't know if it's going to show up very well. I've got a negative sign over here and a positive on that one. Or... If you don't have that, the negative one will always be going down to the points. So now I pulled out a test light. I've got it clipped over here on the negative cable. And what we're gonna do is go to the battery plus wire. And you see there it lights up. So we've got voltage going to the coil. So now what I've done is I've connected the test light to the positive lead, and then this end we will put on the other wire which goes to the points. And when the points close, it should complete the circuit to ground and the light will flash when you crank it. So if it flashed, that would have meant the points were functional. Since it didn't flash, that means we have no path to ground. Therefore, we, we now know that we have to pull this cover off right here and get to the points. The condenser is right down there, and even if that was bad, it would still have spark. The condenser just gives um, the little bit of residual spark somewhere to go and uh, you won't burn your points up quite as fast with the condenser. Got the points cover pulled back and these right here are the points. At the tip of the screwdriver is where it makes contact. This little push rod back here pushes this half away and when it comes back closed that's what completes the path to ground and it collapses the field inside the coil which induces the spark. So what we're going to do is, I don't have a points file, so I'm going to put a piece of emery cloth in between the points let them close on it and pull it out. You do that a couple times. Just get some of the junk cleaned off of them because they're a little scuzzy. And uh, we'll go ahead and see if it'll start after this. Well, it took some doing, and these points are pretty well pitted and need replaced anyway. But you can see now, when I touch the wire coming off of them, my test light lights up. So now they are completing the path to ground, and my coil should work. Before I misspoke, I said when the points close, the field collapses. It's actually when the points open. When it opens, there's no more path to ground, and the field collapses then. The points cover's all buttoned up, coil wires are hooked back together. Let's see if it has spark. Yep. 
gonna get the camera closer. Just wanna make sure you can see that. That nice bright blue spark there, that's exactly what you wanna see. It's a nice hot spark. Um, if it's yellow, it's actually kind of weak. That nice bright blue uh, is very indicative of a good spark. So now we're gonna just put the coil wire right back on the spark plug, turn the fuel on, and it's gonna fire up for us. It runs pretty good. After getting the uh, points clean last night, so it had spark, fired right up. We did change the oil and grease everything last night off camera. I know you guys know how to do that. Really, no point in showing that. Gonna go uh, do some tilling now, see how it works. Obviously, this is nowhere near a restore job. I mean, the thing torched in a fire, we're literally just getting it going to use it as a tiller. Deers have a granny low crawl speed. They're a four speed mower, but the first action is a little lock plate to get into it. It's perfect for tilling. Seems they're doing a pretty fine job, honestly. Well, there you have it. It's up and running. It's uh, fully functional. I'm happy with it. Sorry I didn't get more footage of it running. It's just a little too muddy. We kept getting stuck. If you want to see that, stick around. I'll put up another video in a month or so when the conditions are a little bit better for that. But as far as uh, I'm concerned, this was a win today. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. Stick around for the next video, and I'll see you guys then.